Now, look, most people would tell you that guns, well, they can be a very bad thing in the wrong person's hands, and they are the cause of many deaths in a lot of different scenarios. But one thing that is still fair to say about these is that they are true feats of engineering. They're weapons that were carefully designed and honed over the course of decades to become the powerful and dangerous things that they are now. And considering how many world powers use them, along with other weapons, and want the best ones for themselves, well, they're not afraid to spend all of that time making the best things that go boom possible. With that, here now are 20 of the most powerful military weapons in action. Number 20. The GAU-8 Avenger When it comes to guns, there are few things that are often supersized for specific purposes. For example, you can increase the size of the bullet that can be fired from the gun, or you can increase the rate of fire that the gun shoots the bullet. In the case of the GAU-8 Avenger, they decided to make just about everything bigger in order to ensure that this gun not only hit its target, but also riddled it with bullet holes. In fact, you could say this gun is the only machine gun on the planet that can turn tanks into scrap. Or at least that's what it could do if you let it. The design of the gun is old school because it's an old school weapon. It was designed from the earliest models of the Gatling gun and then set to supersized so that it could tear holes in things, like lots and lots of holes in things. And when the trigger is initially pulled and the barrel spins, it fires about 50 rounds in the first second alone and then 65 rounds per second for every second thereafter. The sustained rate of fire is 3,900 rounds per minute or 65 rounds per second, and that's a whole lot of bullets. And trust me when I say, these are not small bullets that are being fired. The gun is chambered for a 30 by 173 millimeter round, and there are three versions of the round, an armor-piercing incendiary with a projectile consisting of an aluminum jacket and a depleted uranium penetrator and a high-explosive incendiary. So, no matter what you put into it, something's going to get hit and it will not be the same ever again, especially if you put in the explosive round. The irony of this Gatling gun is that not only is it bigger than a car when it's mounted onto its ride, but it's also so very powerful that they made it so that it would only fire for one to two second bursts versus just letting it go all out. I guess they didn't want to see what kind of damage it would do at full power. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The RS-28 Sarmat While we'll get to the more low-key weapons that militaries across the world have, I do feel that it's important to point out one of the kinds of weapons that will well and truly destroy us if we allow it to have its way. I'm speaking in this case of the RS-28 Samat. Now, what is that? It's a Russian intercontinental ballistic missile, aka an ICBM. Many of you likely went wide-eyed at that acronym because that's a term that's used for the missiles that could theoretically blow up the entire world if enough of them are launched or at the very least, it would wipe out a lot of human civilization. The good news is that while the Russians have made it, they haven't been able to fully prove its function. As of 2023, there was an unsuccessful test of it, and that's something we should all be happy about given their aggressive natures in theater as of the last few years. However, make no mistake, if they are able to get this fully operational, and get it made in a vast amount of numbers, they'll likely have one of the most powerful ICBMs out there. And this is the kind of firepower that wars are started over, or also quickly ended with. Plus, the Russians, given the desires of certain other nations to stop such missiles, have outfitted the thing to become much harder to take down once it's shot up out of the silo. So, what we have here is a weapon that is capable of having numerous kinds of warhead configurations, going great distances, it isn't easy to bring down, and it's in the hands of a nation with a very itchy trigger finger. Maybe we should feel on edge about it all. Number 18. Ohio-class submarines. Now, I'm going to cover all of the various kinds of areas that weapons like these will be used in. That includes on the ground, in the air, and yes, of course, under the sea. Because while there technically has never been a submarine war, 
Submarines have been used by many countries during global-scale wars for decades. They can easily help to change the tide of battle, depending on how they're outfitted and their stealth capabilities. And for the United States, the Ohio-class submarines are the ones we're going to focus on today. Now, technically, the Ohio-class submarines of the United States Navy are not exactly meant to be attack ships, say like a destroyer or a carrier. They're actually meant to be a kind of deterrent ship. You know, the ones that you'll send in to kind of give a person a warning to back off or they'll rain fire down upon you. Yes, it's that kind of thing, and this submarine can do that without getting caught. When they were first tested in 1982, they were completely invisible on the radars of the United States, proving just how good its stealth technology was. And if the United States could not detect one of these subs, well, then nobody could. The other reason people should be quite fearful of this submarine is that it has an armament of weaponry that can be deployed both above and below water. They have the Trident II D5 missile, which has a great range and impressive accuracy. It's not exactly one of the Navy's nuclear submarines regarding firepower, but it is powered by a nuclear reactor. Plus, they're so hardy and efficient that they can actually go almost two decades without needing to be overhauled. You wouldn't want to be an enemy nation and find out that a bunch of these submarines are in your waters, just saying. And technically, there are more dangerous subs in the United States arsenal, like those nuclear-armed subs that I mentioned before. But these ones are still quite dangerous, and they won't be afraid to show their teeth if they're asked. Number 17. The TOS-1A Sadly, we have to not only go back to Russia right now, but I also have to talk about a weapon that is being used at the moment in their war on Ukraine. The weapon in question is the TOS-1A, Curiously, they call it a flamethrower weapon, and which likely would make you think of a certain single-man unit that can light up like a forest fire. But that's not the case. This is instead a mobile missile launcher, and by mobile, I mean that it can be driven from afar so that no one can be shot at inside the vehicle. Once it gets to its destination, it can then take out all manner of combatants with the variety of missiles that it will be outfitted with, and initially, it would be used to bomb buildings and clear out entrenched forces. It's going to be elevated. First, it rotates 300 degrees. But now, it can be used to support advancing Russian forces or even take on enemy armor. Plus, it can also be equipped with short-range and long-range missiles, whatever may suit the needs of the driver. Not to mention, because it's a mobile platform, piloted by someone who's far away, it's much harder to stop the vehicle from firing its missiles unless you take out the entire vehicle itself. That's something that's not going to be easy to do in the heat of battle. And again, it's a weapon that's being used by many forces right now, with not the best intentions in mind. Showing that sometimes, the most deadly of weapons are in the most sinister of hands. Number 16. The Uran 9. Here we have another Russian weapon to show you, but in truth, it's one that can actually help to shed some light on the future of warfare itself. After all, what is the future of warfare in the world? Well, at first, machinery like tanks were meant to be nothing more than extensions of humans on the battlefield. But these days, with technology becoming so advanced, you can remove the person from the battlefield and still have some great results. The Uran-9 robot tank is an excellent and terrifying example of that. It was developed in Russia, but has also been used during the Syria civil wars and more. It's a completely unmanned tank and can be outfitted with various weapons in order to help eliminate targets or take out certain structures. Now, on the bright side though, apparently its service record is spotty at best, and the Syrians were not actually able to use it properly due to poor function. However, that does not mean that it's a failure. In fact, the Russians are working to improve it right now, not to mention, if you consider the first version of the tank, then the next versions will be even better, more deadly, and even more advanced. Plus, there are other nations like the United States who have been working with similar unmanned tanks in an attempt to further protect their soldiers by having the vehicles take all of the damage in battle. When you add to this other unmanned vehicles already out in the field, you're going to understand why this is another example of the future of warfare. Number 15. Profense PF M134 minigun. 
You remember that one scene in Terminator 2 Judgment Day when the T-800 has to hold off the police without killing them? So that he and Sarah and John Connor can try to save the world? Remember when he pulled out that handheld Gatling gun and rained bullets down upon everything? Well, that was the M134 minigun, and the Profense PF M134 minigun is the advanced version of that weapon. While you may not handle it like Arnold Schwarzenegger did in the movie, as that was a prop, obviously, this is still one of the deadliest guns in the world, and one that can easily rip through people and vehicles with ease. To that end, you'll usually find it mounted either on a boat or another vehicle for easy guidance, and unlike the Gatling gun that I talked about earlier, you can absolutely set this thing to full auto and just allow the bullets to fly without a care in the world. Outside of the Terminator franchise, this style of minigun has appeared on other shows and films of the past, including being on Mythbusters for multiple episodes, and it was even able to cut down a tree with an onslaught of bullets, annihilate fish in a barrel, and more. And if you ever get to use this gun, consider yourself a lucky person. Just put it that way. Number 14. The Bastion P while we'll take a shift back to missiles, the Bastion P is not the kind of missile I talked about before. Instead, I'm talking about a more defensive missile option that Russia has in order to help and protect its borders. After all, nations like Russia don't only need to protect the land and air, they need to make sure that they can take out any enemies that may try to come at them from the water. Given that many of Russia's enemies, like the United States, have a vast navy, they also need coastal defense systems to hold them at bay or to sink their battleships should they get too close. The Bastion P is one such option that can do that. Not only can it launch missiles a good distance to take out enemy vessels, but it's a mobile platform. So, if it needs to go from one place to the next to line up a better shot, well, that's what it's going to do. These feature a range of 300 kilometers with high-low flight trajectories and 120 kilometers with low-low flight trajectories, and if it wanted to, it could even house a nuclear warhead, instantly making it a weapon that nobody is going to want to mess with. Number 13. The BGM-71 Tow And now, let's head back to weapons that people themselves can actually wield. Though, technically, I did talk about the Terminator before, I'll let that one go as he is a person to me. The BGM-71 Tow is a very special kind of anti-tank missile, one that is so big it can actually take out a tank, and even a heavy tank of that, in one single shot. It was used during the Vietnam War, the Arab-Israeli Wars, the Iran-Iraq War, the Gulf War, and so on, and so forth, and in many, many more. It may not be the easiest weapon to wield, especially compared to something that I'll talk about soon enough, but it is one that gets the job done. Plus, not only has it been used for decades, it's been upgraded more and more to be more efficient, more deadly, and to be in use by numerous nations all over the world. It's a weapon that will make things go boom, and really, what more could you want? Number 12. The Bell V-280 Valor It's about time I get to talk about an actual aircraft. I've touched upon everything else at this point, but the Bell V-280 Valor is not your standard aircraft by a long shot. Yes, it is a helicopter, but it's also one in a long line of copters that were intended to not only be able to do vertical takeoffs to act like a helicopter, but a more standard takeoff so that it could act more like a plane. Why would it need to do that? Well, that's so that it has the versatility in its aerial arsenal, while also ensuring that these vehicles can do some long-range assault runs. While these have not been yet put into action, the concept has been around for quite some time, and it may not be long before they're raining havoc down upon their enemies. Number 11. The M2 Browning I've already shown you two weapons that can destroy a tank, but they're not exactly the most mobile of things now, are they? That's why the United States military asked for a gun that could act like a machine gun, be wielded and carried by a person more or less, and also fire bullets that were big enough to blow holes in the enemy vehicles and other targets. Their response? Well, it comes in the form of the M2 Browning machine gun. What makes it so special is, you know, outside of the fact that it fires 50 caliber rounds, 
The round is so big it can actually punch a hole through just about anything without a whole lot of issues at all. And since it's a machine gun, it means it can mow down an enemy vehicle and riddle them with holes without having to reload for quite a while. You ask for a bigger and better gun, and this one certainly delivers. Number 10. Mission Master Now remember previously how I talked about other nations experimenting with unmanned ground vehicles to help their troops in combat? The Mission Master is another example of that, but it's not exactly the most aggressive vehicle, and that's for a very specific reason. Mainly, it's meant to be a kind of recon vehicle, or one that can do surveillance on an enemy encampment without being easily detected. In other words, this is the vehicle that you send in so that your troops don't immediately walk into a trap. But wait, there's more! It can also be fitted with a tactical overwatch, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear detection, medical evacuation operations, and communication relay missions. If you're wondering how the vehicle could hold a person in the field for a rescue mission, well, that's because it can hold up to 600 kilograms on land and 400 kilograms on the water. So if a soldier or even a few soldiers needed to be evacuated immediately, the Mission Master could do it with ease. Plus, there are also variations of the Mission Master that can be designed specifically for rescue or can even be outfitted with weapons to act as a kind of fire support ride. As said before, this is the future of warfare in all of its frightening glory because the more that we can take the man out of the battlefield and put machines in his place, the less risk there will be in certain operations. Or in a more common phrase, he who has the best toys wins. Number 9. The Maxim Gun Now, if I haven't made it clear enough by now, guns have come quite the long way into becoming the beasts that they are now lining the battlefield. The case in point, the Maxim Gun was the first truly automatic machine gun that could be used by a person. And as a result, it was instrumental in a lot of wars, including both the World Wars and many conquests that were led by the British. Now, the Maxim gun featured one of the earliest recoil-operated firing systems in history, which meant that the gun would naturally discharge the bolt casing and then reload the next round. That's what led to the evolution of a lot of machine guns, especially the bigger ones down the line. This gun was manufactured first in 1884, having come quite the long way, and I'm sure that Hiram Stevens Maxim would be proud of what his gun has inspired, or perhaps he would also be horrified. Who can say? Number 8. The MG3 I've shown you quite a few machine guns so far, but what makes the German MG3 machine gun so special that it makes this list? Well, it's simple. It's been in use for over half a century, and the Germans are not exactly eager to get rid of it. As the old saying goes, if it's not broke, don't fix it, and that's the statement that embodies what the MG3 is. It's a simple machine gun that does some great damage, has an excellent rate of fire, and is not going to jam on you or become defective in the field. So while there may be bigger and better guns out there, this is one that you can rely on day in and day out, and that's something you just can't buy or easily replicate. However, for specific use as a light machine gun, they can be mounted on things like tanks to be further useful, and over 40 countries actually still use this weapon, so that should say quite a lot. Number 7. The RPG-7 How poetic that at number 7 we have the RPG in its seventh form, no less. Apparently, they have advanced this legendary weapon seven different times over the years, and yet it's still the same incredible thing that is a boon to those who use it and a bane to those who are in its path. To be fair, the RPG-7 is hardly any kind of revolutionary weapon in the concept department. It was made during the Second World War by the Russians in order to mimic what the United States were doing with their bazookas and similar weapons. It was an anti-tank weapon, which is important to note, because tanks were one of the biggest tools that were used by the German forces. The point of these weapons was to pierce the tank and blow up their insides, or to hit them in a key point to render them inoperable. Wisdom. Where the RPG-7 became legendary, especially in later forms, was that it was easy to build, easy to use, and would deliver an extremely explosive payload that even modern tanks and vehicles would not be able to endure. And because of how it's constructed, both in terms of its body and missile, it can be used by one person by propping it up on their shoulder, fired off, 
and then it can be gone before somebody even sees where they are and fires back. Or they can very easily reload the RPG to fire once again. It's so capable of a weapon that they're able to be fired indoors without any danger to the person who fires it due to how long it takes for the missile head to arm and then detonate. Hence why you'll always see these fired at long distances because it does take a little while to warm up. But once it does hit its target, the target is toast, and that's why it's not only used in the world today, but even decades after its creation, it's still employed by dozens of countries. Number 6. The AH-64 Apache I've talked about several vehicles on this list so far, but now I'm going to speak about one of the best and deadliest weapons ever constructed, the AH-64 Apache. This attack helicopter comes in two main forms, the standard model and the Apache Longbow. Either way, the helicopter is one of the definitive vehicles that the United States Army uses to try and get enemy targets out of the way. And it's outfitted with all the sorts of weapons to get the job done. For example, it has a special machine gun on the front that doesn't only fire a lot of rounds per minute, but also has a guidance system that actually links up with the pilot's helmet. That's because the pilot can simply look at a target it wants to shoot, and then the helicopter's gun will aim to hit that very spot. That's just one of the many futuristic abilities that the AH-64 Apache has in order to help make this chopper one of the deadliest weapons of the United States Army. That doesn't even talk about the various rockets and missiles that it can rain down in order to help destroy a target, clear obstructions, and more. The AH-64 Apache was built to last in the best ways possible. For example, if sent out into the field on a long mission, it can last for about a day and a night before needing to return to be refueled. It can even be put into harsh weather and not bat an eye. Or, if the worst should happen and it's shot and has to crash land, it's designed to prevent severe injuries to the pilots and the crew inside. So, could you just imagine a wave of these things in any form coming at you? It would probably not be a good day for you, I can tell you that much. Number 5. The Sea Ram Now, I teased it before, but the world is in a place right now where nations not only have to be ready for war against vehicles, but also against missiles coming at them from every direction. And how does one take out various incoming projectiles without endangering a lot of people? One of those answers would be the Sea Ram. Basically, it's a set of systems used to detect and or destroy incoming rockets, artillery, and mortar rounds in the air before they hit their ground targets, or simply provide early warning. In other words, it's a rapid-fire machine gun that can easily take down certain missiles, rockets, or mortars before they come around, or alert the nearby personnel that things are about to get heavy. Now, obviously, it wouldn't work against something like an ICBM, but there are other countermeasures for something like that. Number 4. The Moab If I said that this was an explosive device, I'm pretty sure you could easily get what Moab stands for. It stands for Mother of All Bombs, but curiously, it's not actually a bomb that has a nuclear device in it, because the United States has plenty of those. Instead, this is the most powerful non-nuclear device that the U.S. has, and it's meant to mean business and deter a lot of threats. The intent for when it's in combat is simple. It's meant to wipe out just about anything that's in its path without having to resort to irradiating the area. So, if it's a cave, it'll get destroyed easily, in a forest will be cleared with a single blast, and on the battlefield, well, it'll be more like a crater when the Moab is finished. The point is, wherever the United States drops this thing, Things won't be there anymore when the detonation is complete. Number 3. The R-36M Do you remember the previous Russian ICBM that I talked about? Well, here is the original model that the Russians made during the Soviet Union era. The R-36M is an ICBM that was made during the Cold War and was part of the arms race that both the USSR and the United States were all about for a time. There was so much fear that surrounded this ICBM and what it could accomplish that there were strategy sessions that were focused on what may happen if Russia had unleashed everything upon the United States, and it was even believed that one single R-36M could have taken out three states alone with just one blast. Thankfully, that never happened, but you have to remember They've already made its more powerful successor. Number 2. 
the RGP-40. Here we have a grenade launcher. The RGP-40 is a really cool Polish-made grenade launcher that is meant to act more like a revolver than anything else. Except instead of firing bullets, it's firing fully armed grenades that can blow up just about anything that they may touch. Now upon first glance, six shots may not seem like a lot, but when you outfit it with the right grenades, well, it can do just about anything that you would want. Plus, since you can fire them long distances, you can shoot them, reload rather quickly, and then continue to destroy the target in question. And it looks really cool in the process. Number 1. The B-83 How can we end a video about weapons in the biggest and most insane way possible? Well, we could always drop another bomb. That's where the B-83, a thermonuclear gravity bomb developed by the United States, comes into play. That's right, it is a thermonuclear gravity bomb. It is in fact the most powerful nuclear weapon that the United States has right now, and plus, because it's a variable system, it can also be adjusted to be as powerful as the United States wants it to be. For example, the initial desire for this bomb was to be a bunker buster, but not just any bunker, a nuclear bunker. You know, the ones that you hide in not to become nuked? Well, yeah, that's what this one is meant to go and blow up to high heaven. So yeah, should another major war with the United States come into play, well, this is the kind of weapon that you may expect to show up should the big guns be needed. That's all from the realm of military weapons that aren't afraid to go big on the blasts and gunfire to ensure that their targets will go down. Which of these weapons were you blown away by, and which ones would you be tempted to fire yourself to see how it feels? Perhaps there's another one that could be on this list. Let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I will see you next time.